Our chip is basically is, uh, uh, can support uh, high resolution up to 2K resolution. Up to 2K, so that, yep. yeah. Yeah, and uh, it can be a dual channel LVDS interface. Uh, at the same time, we also take a, a dual channel LVDS import for the camera, for example, right. live video, so that we can do image processing uh, by taking the live video or image, uh, so that we can do a lot of graphics processing and we can overlay to the display panel itself. Hello, iPixers. As you know, we look after you. We bring you disruptive technology from all over the world. We go to the shows. So you, if you can't, we do. And then we report on them. So this morning, it's the first day, Austin, Texas, embedded world for the first time in North America. This is our first interview. This is our first piece of disruptive technology from David, who's from Bridge Tech, who's going to tell us all about his video chip. So yes. David, tell us about your video chip. Uh, yes, uh, today I'm going to actually share our BridgeTech's fifth generation uh, embedded video chip, BT82X series. Uh, so our video chip is actually uh, can take graphics, touch and uh, audio, three functions in one chip. Okay. Yeah. So first question, mm. if I'm a design engineer, yeah. what would I be doing mm. if your chip didn't exist? What would be existing on my board today? Uh, typically, an application needs to uh, uh, engage an uh, Android system uh, so that it can uh, just like uh, something like similar a tablet. So tablet. You, you can drive a 2K resolution LCD and you can actually develop a very complicated software uh, to control the graphics and the displays. Right, yeah. right. So today, where does that chip? Does that chip, does that chip take the place of the MCU or does it sit next to the MCU? Yeah, our chip basically is set between the MCU and the... Viewers, graphics. Yeah. Exciting, graphics. Be between the MCU and the LCD uh, display. Right, so it sits between the MCU and LCD. So, so in that respect, it's, a, it's like a driver. Yeah, uh, yeah? It's, it's, a, it's actually a graphics content uh, provider so that uh, you allows any MCU, even if it's actually a low cost, low, uh, low processing power MCU, able to pro, uh, add to a high uh, resolution, we call HMI interface, human machine interface. Right. right, and that sits on the chip itself? Yeah, that sits on the chip itself. Right, and is that software proprietary to you? Yeah, yeah. we, we have a bunch of software, uh, two chains, uh, which assist to develop uh, the um, developer, basically the graphics GUI, we call graphics user interface. Yeah, GUI, yeah. Yeah, and also uh, uh, assist with our uh, touch and uh, audio functions yep. uh, so that a uh, uh, professional or high resolution HMI interface is possible to many applications. Yeah. Okay, so you've launched this new chip at this show. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between this chip yeah. and the one before? What, what have you added to it to make it better? Mm. Yeah, so uh, our chip is basically is, uh, uh, can support a uh, uh, high resolution up to 2K resolution. Up to 2K, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it can be a dual channel LVDS interface. Uh, at the same time, we also take a, a dual channel LVDS import for the camera, for example, right. live video, so that we can do image processing uh, by taking the live video or image, uh, so that we can do a lot of graphics processing and we can overlay to the display panel itself. Right, so you've talked about that kind of environment, tablet environment. Yeah. Can you see your chip being put into industrial environments and IoT environments? Just seen an example over there with a with a with a door. Yeah, the doorbell and the yep. photo booth and the camera systems. Uh, basically, our chip is very universal. Uh, virtually, it can be in any area of uh, application which require a uh, uh, let's say a uh, smart display, smart touch interface. Yeah. Yeah. So Good. it could be medical, it could be uh, industrial control. It could be. Yeah. Right. So medical and industrial. Yeah. So last question. Our subscribers have heard. Yeah. They've heard how you've launched this new chip. Mm. 2K, going to industrial applications, consumer applications, tablets. Et et yeah. If they want to evaluate your chip, how do they do that today? Uh, we have a demo kit and the evaluation board. Yep. Uh, so uh, we have actually software uh, support. Uh, so uh, customer may actually acquire these information, uh, these tools, and as well as our data sheet is already available on our data uh, website. Right. Yeah.
So they have to go to, there's no other way of getting the evaluation board? Uh, yeah, so they can go to uh, uh, distributors. Which are? Like uh, DJK Mausa. Right, DJK Mausa, yeah. So currently the evaluation kit for this BTA track is uh, not available yet uh, because we are planning to launch the product uh, uh, somewhere uh, sometime around March next year. March next year. Yeah. So these evaluation boards won't be avail available until five months time. Yeah, by that okay. time, well, the I both IC and evaluation board will be fully available. Uh, okay. Majority right. of the distributed channels. And how much will those evaluation boards cost? Uh, we're actually planning two versions, the mini version and the full version. Uh, for now, we don't have actually a cost yet. We're still at the prototype stage. Right. Uh, we can try our mini, mini module to be actually a very cost effective. Uh, somewhere between 10 to 20, I would say. Okay. Yeah. 10 to 20 dollars. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. David, just repeat what the name of this chip is again. It's the B... The B2822 from BridgeTech, video chip, sits next to your MCU, yeah. uh, very adaptable, yeah. and the evaluation board will be ready in six months. Yes. Or, exactly. you know what I'm about to say, yeah. go to ipexchange.tech, mm. apply today, and we'll get you in touch with them. Okay. David, have a great show. Very okay. nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank great. you. Thanks.